alert, alert. There is a giveaway this month of May. I'm giving away a tarot deck and an oracle deck. Check it out in the description below. Thanks. Hello, hello, Prism Portal family. This is Cat Ear Reader. And today we're gonna to be doing a pick a card on your love life, okay? So this can be for people that are currently in a connection or people that want to be in a connection or and have somebody in mind or people that don't even have any idea of who that person is out there that they want to bring into their life, but they're dreaming of them and they're hoping for them and they're trying to manifest for them. This is going to work for all of you. So firstly, what I want you to do is focus on what card is drawing you in the most. And that is my cat scout. <laughs> and she usually chimes in when it's a, uh, when she's trying to get home, uh, help help with a, a point getting driven home. Uh, the point that I'm trying to drive home uh, and, and scout is don't focus on the name of the goddess necessarily. Focus on the images and um, don't worry about age. Don't worry about uh, anything like that. I just want you to focus on the energy of each card. Okay. What one is drawing you in? Go ahead and focus for a little second here. And if you need to press pause, absolutely feel free. Let's get into the reading. Hello, group one. This is Hera Alliance. The number 24, might, uh, number 21 rather, might be of significance to you, but I did say 24. Uh, so that might also be significant to you. Hera was Zeus's uh, long suffering wife. <laughs> which is perhaps <laughs> why we have <laughs> the ruins card coming up. Things you no longer need are falling away to make room for the love that you deserve. I mean, is there a better card for Hera? The uncreated. Some of you might be leaving a situation that is no longer serving you and you're looking out toward what is not created yet and going, wow, this doesn't feel like what I thought it would feel like. I'm scared. I don't know. I don't have, I don't, maybe don't have anybody in mind. I don't, I, you've maybe been together. You might've been joined up with somebody for a very long time and uh, are possibly thinking about ending things or have recently ended things. Um, fierce, you act aggressive, but you are just protecting yourself. Soften your heart so you can feel again. That is Leo energy. She puts her hand in the lion's mouth. The Great Theater of Life. This is kind of a sexy deck, um, the Minara Oracle, but um, I thought it would really work nicely in a love reading. So there's, there's a lot to study in this card. We're gonna pull tarot from the mind's eye in just a moment, but I want you to study this card for a second because it, uh, for those of you who can't see it, um, it is a woman uh, backstage at a show uh, pushing away an aggressor who's trying to perhaps get in her pants or someone who's just pursuing her and she's really not interested. Um, meanwhile, there's a show happening over here. People are watching that show. Meanwhile, this woman in the back here who's either waiting to go on uh, or just got off stage is also, she's not only looking at the show that's happening from backstage, but she's looking at these two people kind of figure out a, a messy situation. Venusian energy, um, Aries energy um, as well is coming through. We've got a strong fire here just in terms of ruins and fears. Um, I want you to really think about, uh, you know, you don't have to think about necessarily, oh, do I have a Leo in my life? Am I a Leo? Do I have, you know, we all have Leo placements. We all have Aries and Sagittarius placements. We all have, uh, you know, Venus in a certain place. You know, look, look these things up there. You might be able to piece together a story. Um, there's a reason why I call out certain specific things, you know, 21 or, um, the Lord knows what XL3 is in Roman numerals. I was not a good math student, so someone can maybe put that in the comments. Um, notice that we utilize uh, Latin here, in, crea in creatum. So when I see, it's very impossible for me to see uh, anything other than uh, pure 
creation energy from this this uncreated of sort of like it's almost like a fetus it's almost like it it's it's a soul that's waiting to come down that hasn't come down yet it's uh, you know, Hera, let's get into it. So if you pick this card, if you were drawn to this card, obviously this is a very beautiful woman. She's wearing peacock feathers. She's, you know, she's, she has money, this woman. She, she's, uh, this woman is a goddess. She is married to the most powerful god in the land, Zeus. Now, Zeus very famously cheated on Hera um, a whole ton of a lot. And she loved him. Uh, and I believe she took on other lovers eventually after he had sort of just said like, hey, this is an open marriage situation, I'm Zeus. She gave him children um, and she was an allied force to him because he was stronger because he was with her. He was able to get more done. He was able to conquer more because he was with her, three. Also six, six coming up, 12. Um, you see this golden shadow on her face and it's almost like it's the reflection of the gold that she has for being with this person and together they know that they are stronger because Hera is also noble, right? She's, she's a freaking goddess. She has plenty of powers. Um, she can do what she likes. She has power, but she, it's almost as if when we think of the myth, we think of Hera without power. We think of her as spiteful because she you know, she, she did, she, she got very angry when Zeus would cheat on her and father children with other, you know, goddesses or, or, or women out there. And she did spiteful things to those women. She also has this unreachability to her. There's almost this sort of like the, you know, I say the golden shadow because sure, could it be a reflection of the gold that she has and she's looking at it, but it's also the shadow that comes with the facade of, having, you know, quote unquote, the most powerful marriage or alliance uh, in, in all the land. And you can, you can also, you know, you can, you can apply that to perhaps you have a job that makes you quite a bit of money and you're really happy with it. Or you're, you know, you don't not, you don't have to worry about money. If so, lucky you, that's incredible. Congratulations. That in and of itself, I hope you're very grateful. I mean, gratitude is, is the attitude for a situation like that, um, which I'm sure you are. But uh, you know, you might be very successful at, at whatever it is that you do, or you might be in a position of power. And so it makes dating hard. It makes people seeing you as a sexual creature hard. Um, it makes people, you know, they, they look up to you in a way. There's this untouchable quality when, you know, you just, you just want to hug and kiss and you want, <laughs> you want the things that <laughs> you want to cuddle and <laughs> you want to watch Netflix and, you know, you, you, Your bark is bigger than your bite. But something has ended here. And it could just be a thought pattern. Like, wow, I, you know, in many cultures, uh, at, well, actually, can I say all? All cultures, I think. It's usually pretty um, accepted when a man cheats. You know, uh, oh, that's just what men do. Or some people, you know, some people convince others. Women, of course, do this as well. You know, you can convince your partner or somebody can convince somebody like, hey, it's better if we're, you know, open about this or oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that much of a betrayal when really it is it is such a betrayal if that's not something that was agreed upon. Um, ooh, 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 girl. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Oh, God. We're going to... Oh, God. Here it is. Okay. I... It's important to pull these out as they come. I've noticed the way that they come out also really, really matters. Okay, let me just, okay. Okay. It's, okay. There we go, that was how I saw it because I saw this magician at the end here. So, okay, we're ending with the magician. Um, I'm going backwards here because it's the way they came out. So we have the Magician, we have the Ace of Cups, we have the Tower, we have the Ten of Swords. Wow. Unbelievable. This is Temperance. We have Temperance, Sagittarian Energy, Virgo, Gemini Energy, Page of Cups. Let me see if I can 
can fit that in. The Six of Swords. So yeah, you're definitely, you've left a situation here that you, you're, you're thinking of leaving or you have left. Like you're turning your back on whatever this was that made you feel like, sure, are we stronger together? Maybe perceived as such, but I'm dying inside. I need to forge this path for myself. I can't do it with you anymore and I'm not going to excuse this behavior that makes me feel like I'm not this fierce animal that I, that I know I am. I know that I'm rare. I know that I'm a gem. I'm a diamond and you're not treating me that way so I'm going to leave. Or you're thinking of it. You're thinking of it. You know you have a lot of love to give. This page of cups, this gorgeous sort of mermaid energy. This is the Mind's Eye Tarot. It is one of the most incredible tarot decks I've ever come across in my life. Um, it's by Olivia Rose. And um, it is, look it up. You can get it on Amazon. It's just the most incredible deck. I mean, look at this beautiful artwork. You've got this sort of mermaid with shells in her hair and you've got, she's partially submerged, partially out of water. And it looks like the sun that's shining, but that's the moon, isn't it? It's the moon at night shining so bright that it looks like a sun. That's you. And you're looking at this fish and you're like, maybe if I kiss this fish, like I kiss the frog, maybe, maybe this time it'll work. It's very much what I get from this picture. I think that you've probably, I'm okay. This isn't going to be for everybody, but I, I sense embarrassment and I sense shame for like not knowing something that you told yourself that you should know, like, or I should have, I should have been more mature by now. I should have figured that out by now. And the universe is like, no, you're right exactly where you need to be. Look at this temperance card. This is so magnificent. This is an angel. Okay. You've got, you've got an angel looking out for you. She's watching you. This is the goddess and she, this is possibly Hera. Look into Hera. Hera might really, really be able to help you a lot right now. Read her myth. Read her legend. Um, there's a lot to be mined there. We, we can make so much sense of our lives when we read the myths and the legends that great writers have created from either dust or history of some kind. But I'm looking at this temperance card and this angel is fiery. She has fiery red wings and the universe is watching her turn that water into wine and alchemize a very hard situation. She's taking her tears, if you see. Those are her tears. And she's pouring it into this water glass and that's becoming wine. She's taking her pain and she's alchemizing it. She's making it a deeper part of herself. You can wear that, you know, you can, you're afraid, I think, to be totally honest with people about what's happened to you because you're afraid of breaking the facade of what you had. And I'm not saying you should shit talk your ex, I'm not, or, or your potential ex. I'm not saying that at all. Um, that's really low vibe and that gets, it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't help them, doesn't help you. It only just, you know, it lowers your vibration. Uh, but you were really hurt by what happened. And even if you made up and you said, no, it's, no, we're past it. It's fine. You know how like that happens in relationships sometimes? Where you look at each other and you go, yeah, we're going to put this past us. But there's something behind both of your eyes that says, mm, I'm going to bring this up in an argument <laughs> two years from now when you piss me off in a different way, but the same way, you know? and it's gonna be worse. You are looking back. You are looking back at the things that have exhausted you, that have taken from you, that you let them take credit for, that you, you know, the times you stood up for this person, the time that you defended this person. And it's, it's really feeling, like you're feeling the pain of it, of the betrayal. Some people really truly can't help themselves. 
Some people have addictions to sex, to the thrill of the chase, to, you know, gambling, drugs, of course. But um, some people, you just know, are never going to change. I'm not saying change is impossible. Change is so possible. Change is incredible. Like, I, I wish so much that we all could be in a constant state of change and constantly evolving. But as you know, that is not the case, you know. That is not always the case. And unfortunately, I think for you, you've internalized this so much that you almost feel like it's too late in a way. You're standing on top of this tower though. Take a look at this tower, all right? The whole world is watching you and you are standing calm as the columns of your dress smoke and fire and the fire is reaching your waist and you're putting your hands in the fire and you're looking straight outward and saying, is that all you got, mofo? Because I can stand here all day. I am built of, of the rubble of my own death many multiple hundreds of times. You've died and come back to life so many times at this point. So whether that means you have been incarnated in this, you know, as a human on this earthly plane, however many times and you've lived through battles and lived through wars and lived through all kinds of things. Um, it could be that or it could just be simply in your life. You, ha you are no stranger to the death and rebirth process. You are no stranger to rebuilding yourself out of nothing after the tower has fallen on you and you're stuck in the rubble. You are the rubble. I think that, okay, this is, an, again, this is very specific for somebody, but I think that you used to party. I think you might've used to party with this person and um, this person maybe still likes to party a lot um, and you don't. <laughs> and, um, you don't want to live this life anymore with them that way but it's kind of like maybe how you are like the only way you connect with each other is through substance says <laughs> um and that can also be sex you know in that sense some people have that sexual connection but there isn't anything else and some people have you know other ties I mean, there's plenty of relationships where it's like, oh, how do I hang out with that person if I'm not drinking? How do I hang out with that person if I'm not high? You know, like, uh, go through that in your head, <laughs> perhaps. We've got this Ace of Cups here. There is like this new beginning happening, but if you'll notice, I see new love for you, but it's it's possibly, now I would say cancer season might be uh, something to look at. This makes me feel like, uh, we've got this Ace of Cups here, but it's crying and the moon is behind it and it's rising, but it's sort of, you know, it's like this, this cup on a cloud and the tears are falling from the sky, from the cloud into the sea. And, um, I feel like you have every tool available to you at this time to do whatever you want with this energy. Know that... I just feel like you've constantly put yourself into a position where you need somebody to choose you. And maybe you are reaching a point now where you don't need anybody to choose you. You do the choosing. You are in charge. You're not waiting for someone to give you a ring or tell you you're worthy. It's also archaic and exhausting. You make this for yourself. You are manifesting a person into your life that is going to change it in significant ways. It's going to be more emotionally available to you. It's going to be triggering, but it's going to be, it's going to be a huge amount of growth, but it, it comes from this dissolution of something else. And this new thing, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Okay, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Does that make sense? Like new and uncharted territory often feels like, oh, nope, I'm going to run away from that. I don't need that. I don't want that. I don't, that feels wrong because I've never felt that before. 
follow that feeling and see, see how far it gets you. It's fascinating. It's really fascinating. Okay, here's the die. This might be initials, it might be a name, it might be, who knows. Okay, J, Q, D, S, exclamation point. Make sure you enter into the giveaway for the Eliza Kelly Oracle deck or the Cosmic Coven Tarot. Um, just make sure that you leave me a comment on what you prefer. Do you prefer Tarot? Do you prefer Oracle? I don't know. Just let me know and subscribe to their channel and you'll be entered in to win. Let's go to the next reading. Hello, group two, pile two. Okay, so we have the Great Goddess which means sacred unity. Yes, that is a motorcycle in the city. You might be approaching things with great speed or something might be coming at you with great speed at this moment. Things are moving faster. The universe is working with you. The great goddess, the creator of everything. All of creation. And that little swirl there. We are born of woman. The earth is a woman. The feminine energy abounds. One plus seven is eight. Seventeen. Rainbows. Water. Creation itself. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Ah, reaching. You're trying to connect, but love eludes you. Stepping out of your comfort zone will help. Yeah. I mean, we've all gotten really comfortable being at home alone after the pandemic. The freedom to be yourself. Maybe you learned some things about yourself in this time. Perhaps when we, everybody was shut up in a way during the pandemic, you had some revelations about yourself for better or for worse. And it's put you on a path of greater understanding about yourself, but it's made dating and relationships and connection a little bit hard as is, most of this world is quite superficial and you are not able to feel like you can be yourself uh, with that many people. Secrets, someone isn't telling you the whole story. You have to be willing to both say and hear the truth. Wow, oh boy, okay, yeah. And then the promise of unending love. So we've got second house energy, moon energy, um, Pisces, Scorpio, full moon energy. Oh, there is a full moon in Scorpio coming up here on the uh, April 23rd. So that might be meaningful to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an all signs that day, so be on the lookout for it. Um, I feel like you've... I, we're going to get into tarot, but let's go over this. all of these oracles first. Uh, 19. 27, 10, 9, 8, 8, 9, 10. Wow, okay. Ascending or descending order. Uh, I feel like we are ramping up to this energy of this Romeo and Juliet situation. You see she's sort of cradling him on this balcony and he's reaching up for her, but he's sort of in the thorns and she's trying to pull him up with her kiss and the moon is shining and well, God, haven't we all been there? I think I was there a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. So we've all had this fantasy love where you know what it is. You're kissing and you're doing it and it's great. And you're all, you know, you're love bombing each other and you're showing each other the just greatest parts of yourself, the most attractive parts of yourself. You can find no fault in each other until like, you know, three months later when one of you like, parts or you know there's some sort of like oh you're human oh you are flawed oh you aren't this like perfect human specimen that I thought was going to fix me aren't you going to fix me you've been looking for somebody or you have looked for somebody in the past that is going to come save you man woman doesn't matter you've been looking for a relationship to save you this feeling that you're going to feel this reaching for this feeling that you'll finally feel like a real person or somebody worthy or i'll finally be happy if when really the only thing that you're going to be happy doing is being yourself being the little weirdo that you are 
right? Look at this card. This this girl is she's feeling some feelings. She's like, you know, lifting her arms up. Somebody's painting somebody on the other side here, but she's not the one being painted. Or is she looking in a mirror? Who knows? There's a lot of imagery here. But you're tired of being on the sidelines. There's this feeling of being um, like a, oh Lord, I hate to say side chick, but it's, it is kind of that vibe of like you, people have been hiding you. You've been hidden or you've been hiding from them. Um, when, you know, I think your energy can be too much for people. Sometimes people tell you, oh, you're too much. Why are you so intense? Definitely, I got some Scorpios in here for sure. Um, Capricorns. Um, okay, let's take all, all four of them. So we have the Empress. We have the Page of Pentacles. We have the Four of Wands. We have the Ten of Swords. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Wands. Ah, but I must include right after that was the Fool. Yeah, let me put these in order for you so they make sense. Um, this is the Mind's Eye uh, tarot, and it is truly one of the greatest tarot decks I've ever come across in my life. It's beautifully intricate. Olivia Rose, check it out. Um, okay, so <laughs> some of you, you know, for some of you, you might, you might be pregnant. You might want to be pregnant you're really hoping to be pregnant. You're wondering if you ever will be pregnant one day. And some of you are just pregnant with like this idea. You're full with this idea of like the fantasy, right? You've, you've sustained, you have sustained yourself on this fantasy of the unending love, the, the, the Romeo and Juliet, the you complete me. And you're sort of figuring out that a, it doesn't exist. And B, yeah, we can have like great relationships with people. We can have like soulmate relationships. We can have that deepness. But, you know, Romeo and Juliet were, they they were tragic figures because they never got really beneath the surface. They, in truth, only knew each other a few days. They had sex the whole time. They were in a, you know, a hormonal fog and, you know, many people died. The reason I bring that up is it's like, I feel that us girls you know, and all of us boys too. I feel like we're all just fed this fantasy, this Disney fantasy crap that like, this is what we should want. This is what's coming for us. Some guy, he's going to like come save us. He's going to be wearing tights like that. You know, <laughs> he'll be jumping onto your balcony and you'll, you know, it's, and, and really we need to a save ourselves from ourselves um, and save ourselves from this great world. Um, only we can do that. But, uh, I think that we're lonely and I think that we tell ourselves sometimes we disempower ourselves in a way. It's like we, we're focused so much on the things that we think we should want, whether it's getting married by a certain age, having a child by a certain age, having like, you know, it's done nothing but burden you. Your ten of swords and ten of wands. It has done nothing but burden you to think this way, whatever this, and it never felt right anyway. The page of pentacles, it's like, you want to start something on, you know, you're, you're caught in between the, you're the page of pentacles caught in between the empress and the four of wands, marriage and baby, right? Home, domestic life. And you're like, but I kind of like want to have great sex and start a business. And I kind of don't need you to buy me a ring. And that's kind of gross anyway, but I don't really want to say that because my friends would think I'm crazy. I mean, I remember the first time in my early 20s telling my, the neighborhood kids I grew up with, I don't want kids. And they were like, oh, my God, yes, you do. You're going to change your mind. You'll meet someone. And it's, you know, all the things that people say, the dumb things people say. Um, I think that separating what society wants from for us versus what we actually do want is is quite another thing that's happening here. And I think that you're ready, you're, you're feeling defeated in whatever this thinking has sort of uh, sold you, you know, you're reaching for this soulmate, this lover, instead of, instead of working on yourself and getting to know yourself and figuring out who the hell you are and what you want and where you're going and how you're going to get there. You know, you need to go on a fool's journey right now, back to yourself. Notice how this fool is looking back at the reading. 
she's looking back at all of this programming and all of this societal programming, whether it's religious programming or just patriarchy, whatever. You should do this. You should do that, whatever. And you're like, but wait, that's not exactly what I wanted. I mean, I maybe want some of those things. Maybe I don't want any of these things, you know, it's, but if you're, if you're here for love, I think that you're sort of going back and you're, you're looking at the 10 of wands and the 10 of swords and the freedom to be yourself. You don't know who you are yet. So I'm not saying you need to know fully who you are because you change throughout time, you know, to be with someone, it's not like you need to be like, oh, I know exactly who I am now. I'm ready to get married. It's not that. It's more just like, you just need some time to date yourself and you need some time to be alone with yourself to find out exactly who you are. Because if you don't, if you don't know even a little bit and you're just going to sort of morph into whatever your partner is, uh, which is, you know, I think probably something that you've done in the past and you, you separate what your likes are from what the ex's likes are, you know? When did I start liking you too? Who fucking likes you too? You know, ask yourself these questions. Larry, ask yourself these questions. Um, had to. Sorry, guys. That was low vibe. <laughs> Let's get... I've been... Listen, I read for you. I read for myself, right? Let's do it. I want to get some initials here. Give me, give me something. Give me, give me an indicator. Every single time one has dropped. One second. And I had my Hecate fall down. Thank you, Hecate. She just wanted to say hi. She's cool. She helps me through these readings. Um, okay. So we've got J, B. Thank you for having patience with me, you, and Q. Dot, dot, dot. Um, make sure if y'all are still here, please, um, enter into my giveaway. Just tell me, uh, what you prefer, tarot or oracle, and you'll be entered in to win if you give me a comment and you give me uh, a subscribe if you live in the U.S. So thank you so much, guys. Let's go to hello group three. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We have Persephone, 43, four plus three is seven an experience. I mean, if you were drawn to this card, there is an, inno an innocence to this card, an innocence and an inexperience of that innocence. But it's also, uh, it looks like a young-ish girl, teenage girl, um, noble girl, but sort of like this doe-eyed, like um, new soul sort of thing. That's what it looks like to me. Blind spot. Caught up in a whirlwind. You can't see what's really going on. Ask a trusted friend for advice. I've also got the drowned king, which is ironic because Persephone's uh, myth or legend, for those of you unaware of it, I'll just give you a brief overview. Um, it is it is complex and it is also something that is very uh, debated, especially within feminist groups uh, of her story. The lower and the higher self, again, interesting talking about Persephone, um, is because, so Persephone was a, uh, a Greek goddess crushed. You are hurting emotionally right now. You need time to heal before you jump in again. Yeah, that sounds about Persephone. Yeah. So I'm going to just say it like it is. Persephone was um, like abducted from her home uh, in Greece with her mother and in, in sort of a very pretty pasture um, and uh, taken. She was stalked and taken down to the underworld by Hades, the god of the underworld. Um, not Satan, you know, this is, this is Greek mythology. Um, but you know, God of the underworld, underworld, you can sort of assume hellish, <laughs> sorry, I bumped the thing here, but, uh, you essentially might be feeling helpless. I suppose you might be feeling helpless in the situation that you're currently in. You're never helpless. I promise you're never helpless. Um, but 
yeah, you might have this blind spot because Persephone did not see this coming and he, Hades took her down to the underworld and um, he tricked her into eating uh, a pomegranate uh, seeds and then she, uh, it, he, it, it was like he owned her after that and she wanted to go back up to see her mother but he would not let her, she was now the queen of the underworld with him. And some say that Hades represents like, the dark masculine and there's obviously just like there's high vibrations of Scorpio and low vibrations of Scorpio and with every sign there's high vibrations of a goddess or god and then there's lower vibrations of a god or god uh god or yeah goddess or god um and so you know the drowned king is like Neptunian energy to me Poseidon perhaps um, looking up the difference between Poseidon and uh, Hades might be interesting. That might tell you something about your situation right now. I think that you're looking at the woman that you once were before you were with this uh, Poseidon or Hades. Um, and I think that you're really... You're feeling like you're never going to recover because this person took something from you. This person took something from you that wasn't theirs to take. And because of that, it's given you this blind spot in life where you are not able to see sometimes who the good people are and who the bad people are. And sometimes you're attracted to people that ultimately end up being bad people and, and hurt you and steal from you and do bad things. And it sort of recreates this situation perhaps that you had in childhood you're used to a strong masculine uh, patriarchal figure telling you what to do and it feels wrong otherwise. You don't know how to trust yourself. I want to get some tarot on this because you absolutely can trust yourself. Okay. Okay. We have the five of wands. So you've been fighting, you've been fighting this. I don't know uh, exactly what the fight has been about. Can I get some information on, oh, here. So let's see, oh, one more. Okay, so, wow, this is gorgeous. I'm so excited about this energy. We got the Four of Cups, we got the Fool, oh, we got the Hermit, hmm, and the Eight of Swords. That's fascinating because, so I, I saw the Four of Cups and, and I saw the Fool and I thought, okay, yeah, she's not satisfied. She's not satisfied. We're, we're getting out of whatever, whatever situation we've been in here, we're getting out of it. Um, there's forward movement. You're finally listening to yourself. And listening to yourself is not the same thing as doing something. You can know there's a problem and still be in the problem, but you've at least finally acknowledged that there's a problem. Um, you're going to have to reparent yourself a little bit here because you are still very blind and vulnerable to bad people right now. Okay? I'm not trying to knock you. I'm trying to be your friend. And this is what I see. This is what the cards tell me. You are better off alone right now. I know that some of you don't want to hear that. But you're putting a band-aid on a bullet wound. And you're not doing the real healing that you need to do. And that is on yourself. There are certain automatic things that you do from childhood that you're not even consciously aware of that you are perpetuating now in your relationships and it is causing not only yourself harm but other people harm. Um, you're becoming aware of it. You're, you're maybe realizing that you have some complex PTSD or some childhood PTSD um, or that, you know, you're an adult child of alcoholics, adult child of divorce, you know, whatever, whatever it is. It's usually, uh, it just gets down to the fact that somebody who was not conscious raised me 
and gave me their generational trauma because they did not heal themselves. And so now you are at this sort of crossroads where you've been fighting this. Like, I don't know if like your father recently died, uh, the man in your life possibly died or left. Um, this person is no longer around. Um, you might have cut them out. You may have just, you might have just drowned them yourself in that sense. Like you put them away in a box and you're like, I'm not, this is no contact. You know, whoever this masculine is in your life, they're out of your life and they're not, um, I don't see this being a problem for you once you're able to marry the lower self and the higher self. Okay, so you've got to get your mind working with your body and your body working with your mind. You're going to need to be doing meditation, yoga stuff, like uh, any any kind of like uh, compound workout, you know, um, where it's the idea of, you know, uh, what is it, you, you know, patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time, like that kind of stuff, um, which is hard to do. It is hard to do when you're not healed, but you're on your way to doing that. And you're learning from this pain because you never want to feel this way again. And you want to go back. You know, you want to, you want to go, you're, you're at least as you're reviewing what has happened to you, at least as you're looking back, you're not remembering certain things, which is for your own benefit right now. So know that if you're looking back and you're going like, oh, like maybe it wasn't so bad. It was that bad. And your mind is playing tricks on you. If you think otherwise, you have a blind spot with this. So be very, very, very careful how you look back with rose-colored glasses the way that you tend to do. You're so innocent, Persephone, okay? This is not your fault, okay? It's not your fault. It's And it's okay if you feel this inexperienced energy and you're a well-grown adult. You're well into your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, I have relatives of all ages and I'll tell you the, the, the problems are universal. Okay. Um, <laughs> life is one big high school. Okay. And we can learn a lot from high school because we basically recreate it in every single institution there is, um, whether it be workplaces or you know, higher education or whatever, but it just repeats itself until you learn the lessons, you know, and even then, oh boy, the universe is going to throw you a few more things. The reason I'm talking to you about these two cards right here, the fool and the four of cups, the reason why this is important is the four of cups is, you know, she's looking out at the water and there's four shells sort of up Fibonacci sequences, if you will, right? Maybe she's doing physics or something. And she's looking, she, her eyes are closed, but it is insinuated that she is using her third eye to see what is in front of her. But she's choosing not to see what's in front of her. So her eye <laughs> is perhaps focusing on another option. Oh, okay. Well, you don't, you're, you're refusing to look at what's right in front of you. Okay. Here's this like, you know, other option coming down from the sky that looks even better, right? More mystical. There's an eyeball in it. I mean, that looks way cooler to have than just like a plain old regular shell, right? And that eyeball in the shell is looking at her third eye and sort of like telepathically being like, like calling to her. So when you have an abuser, okay, in your life, and again, I feel like this is a masculine energy, um, but it absolutely could also be a feminine energy. I mean, these things are interchangeable, so apply it how you will apply it. But <sighs> abusers almost have this telepathic thing with the people that they abuse. And like, you don't want to think about them, but they, they're, they're in your thoughts constantly. Like, any of you that have been through any form of abuse, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been there. I've been there so many multiple times. And I can speak on this as someone who's been through it and through the other side. Like, it is a constant battle, like constantly questioning, like, who can I trust? Who's actually trustworthy? Y your picker does get better as you heal yourself. I promise you that. But it also is important to just know that sometimes your brain is going to lie to you. Like, oh, I should forgive them or, oh, it's fine. Like what they did wasn't that bad or, oh, I deserved what they did or whatever. Because a lot of times these people are in our family. 
A lot of times these are people like people close in our life and it would really blow up our lives if anybody ever knew like what had actually happened. And I saw this like meme the other day that was saying something like, you know what I love about millennials and Gen Z is and Gen X too. Uh, that we're we're just blasting people like we don't care anymore like we're just if something's wrong we're gonna like say it like this is wrong this person did something screwed up I'm not saying you need to put anybody on blast in your life I'm just saying that if you told if you've told your story out loud to multiple people that don't know the situation and like they're like in shock at the end like yeah you went through some trauma <laughs> like if they're like oh my god I'm so sorry and you're like what that was just like my ninth birthday party it was normal right and people are like um are you okay like are you in therapy um you're getting to know that certain things that were normalized to you are were not okay and that you're not crazy because I think that you've been told you're crazy a lot I think that people have been like Oh, you're overblowing things. Oh, you're so dramatic. Oh, you're just such, you act like a teenager. You're so dumb. You're so inexperienced. And you're just like, no, I'm actually the truth teller. And you will now listen to my truth. I will speak from my throat chakra here on this fool card. She knows that this is bullshit. This, this third eye talking to the abuser telepathically, him being like, hey, I got this cool show with the eyeball in it now. Come back to me. She's like, no, I don't think so. That's your higher self talking to your lower self going, no, I got you, girl. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna parent you the way that you should have been parented. And no, they don't deserve you to call them. No, you don't need to get back with your ex. No, you don't need, you don't need them to protect you. You can protect your damn self. Because I will tell you what happened to Persephone. Hecate, the queen of the witches. Hecate. With her hounds and her moon. Uh, she lights, she, she is buddies with Demeter, uh, her, uh, Persephone's mother that uh, was just bereft with grief. And um, Hecate being the torchbearer, she, you know, she carries the torch down to the uh underworld and she talks she makes a deal with hades and she's the one who gets persephone out of that situation and is able to get persephone back to her mother for six months out of the year and then for the next six months she does have to go back to the underworld so that's also like the other side of the coin there like persephone was bound to go back but in myth as it as it goes on and this is where it gets problematic in feminist groups is that, you know, it's like, oh, then they became this great pair and she learned to love it. And it's like, OK, so that's I don't. So I do not look at this myth and go, oh, yeah, like that's <laughs> that's what should happen to you. No, that's I. So I take the other side to that, which is um, she was always she's always going to be haunted by this. There's no denying that. But focus on focus on the sun, focus on the green pastures, focus on the woman with the torch who's getting you out of the dark and opening up the door with her keys because she also has that she's the key bearer, Hecate, and gets you out of that situation, you know? So if you need to look to a higher power, looking, looking at Demeter, looking at Hecate, Lilith, Persephone, there, there are things to find that are empowering about Persephone as well. Like you, it's worth looking into. Um, look into these Greek myths because these women were badass and they did incredible things. So I think that you can get a lot of inspiration from like history right now and like myth, legend, like go back and look at your Roman gods, your Greek gods, your Celtic gods and goddesses. Let's see. V H dash. I don't know why I wanted to do that. The dash there. Yeah. OA. Oh, OA. Yeah, that's, I did it wrong. I put A before O, but Overeaters Anonymous comes out. Um, no shame in that, guys. Recovery is recovery. Um, Kathy Griffin talks a lot about Overeaters Anonymous, um, really helping her um, overcome several eating disorders and also just have a healthier relationship to, to food. It's one of those things, guys, you know, like <laughs> we're all human. We're all human. I want you guys to um, just ruminate on this a little bit. VH, right? VHS tape. Interesting. Britannica. 
also coming up. Um, so I want you to just uh, remember your power, most of all, and empower. If you don't have women in your life that can empower you, um, find it in stories because there are so many good stories. Okay. Uh, Christina Pinkola Yates, I believe her last is. She's a uh, woman, women who run with wolves. Uh, oh no, uh, Chris, uh, Christina Pinkola Estes. Um, another fabulous f female empowering, uh, work. Make sure you guys enter, um, the giveaway if you want, uh, information down below. Uh, let me know what you like tarot deck or Oracle deck. Which one do you like better? Which one would you like to win? Um, you know, I'm giving away a, fr a free tarot deck and a free Oracle deck to people in the U S. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. I'll talk to you soon. And yay. I'm so glad to be back. Let's do more of these. Bye.